Recently, I've got a lot of questions asking, can you use polygloss on stainless steel? Well, guess what? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to use polygloss on stainless steel, and we're gonna get started right now. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another tutorial video. And if you're new here, I hope that you really do enjoy this content and you learn and you take away something from this tutorial video. Now, in terms of our tutorial video for today, I'm going to be applying polygloss onto stainless steel. I've had so many questions asking, can you apply polygloss to stainless steel and will it work when you sublimate? Guess what? This is what we are going to be doing today, step by step, from start to finish. So as custom and as normal, I'm going to be placing all of the tools and resources and everything at the side of the screen here for you, so that you'll be able to see exactly what I'll be using. My Workforce Epson 7710 printer, my HPN Signature Series mug press. I'm going to be using some ASL paper, and I'm also going to be trying and using some multi-purpose copy paper yes you heard it standard printing copy paper that would be in your printer we're going to also try and see how it comes out on the stainless steel items and apparels okay so stick with me to the end of the video i'm going to put some timestamps down below and also put some information down in the description for you that will help you so stick around so you can see the final result and let's get started so we are about to start our process and we have what we will be using right here on the table. So let's start off with the polygloss. So we have the polygloss, we have the catalyst here, as you can see. You have a syringe, a stick to stir up the mixture and a measuring, a small measuring cup. Now, when you purchase your polygloss from either Amazon or Dipress, it comes with this package, polygloss, your catalyst, a syringe. It comes with about four to five sticks to stir and about four measuring cups. So I'll put the links down in the description for Dipress and also for Amazon so you can actually purchase your own polygloss set if you are interested. However, I have um, some paint brushes here that I'll be using to dip in and actually paint on. I'm going to decide which one I'm going to use. I have two containers and the purpose for these containers is whenever I'm finished coating these two stainless steel bottles, I need to place these over the stainless steel bottles and this will prevent bubbles. We, we try to get all of the bubbles popped and none left on your stainless steel bottles. Now, speaking about stainless steel bottles, I'll be using two of these. And these are stainless steel, as I mentioned before. And we can also check them. And this one. So you can actually hear the, um, the song that they're actually stainless steel. So we have our items here. Now let's start the first process. So we're going to start by making our polygloss and uh, then we're going to apply it onto our bottles. So the first thing we're going to do is we have our measuring cup here, as you can see, and uh, we are going to be using one ounce of this polygloss. We're going to be using afterwards one milliliter of this catalyst here in the polygloss. We're going to stir it and then we're going to apply it onto the two bottles. So one ounce first, so you want to just pour one ounce. And it's basically going to bring it right up to the top. That is about one ounce. Now, I'm going to be using this syringe, which is a three milliliter syringe. However, I am only going to be using one milliliter 
of catalyst. So we're going to be using one milliliter of catalyst and we're going to squeeze that into our polygloss and then we're going to stir it. Now, once I have that started, my next step now would be to stir it up and it will be ready for use. So my polygloss is now ready to be used on those two bottles. So our next step now is to apply the polygloss onto this bottle and this flask. And I'm gonna take off the cover first. Covers off of both. And uh, my bottles are already clean. You have to make sure that you clean your, the surface of your bottles or flasks, whatever stainless steel object you're using, always make sure to clean off the surface first. I would have went ahead and cleaned off my surfaces already so I can go ahead and coat these with this polygloss. But before I do that, I always like to have a piece of rag or old shirt hanging around where I can spread it over and use it in case a mess is made. So you can think about that process in terms of keeping your area clean. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna dip my brush into the polygloss and I'm gonna apply a tin coat all the way around our um, bottle. Bear in mind, I'm gonna be pressing only on one side, but we're gonna coat the entire bottle from the top right away down. We're gonna put it aside and do the same thing for the flask okay and then we are going to continue now you want to make sure you get it in a nice straight motion and you're probably going to see a lot of bubbles coming up and this is the purpose when we when we get further down in our video talking about bubbles this is why we would use those containers, especially if you're living in an area that has a lot of heat, you don't want your polygloss to dry immediately. So you're gonna take your time and you're gonna coat the bottle. And if you see some bubbles come up, there's no need to worry because what we will be doing afterwards is we're gonna be covering this over with our container for about 10 minutes and that will reduce some of the bubbles. And so far, you can see the result here. Have a few, a few bubbles, but we will tend to it shortly. All right, so, I finished coating both of these uh, stainless steel items, as you can see. And uh, just as I said, it's gonna be a little messy, so that's why I have my cloth there. So I'm finished coating these right now. And as we spoke earlier about these containers, what I'm gonna do is to place these containers over the bottle and this will slow up the process of the polygloss drying onto the bottle itself. Once again, the reason for putting these containers over these items, I want to reduce the speed of the polygloss drying on the bottle because we want to make sure that there are no bubbles. So we want to take our time, slow up the process of the drying so we're going to leave these on here for about 10 minutes. Then we're going to come back, take a look. Once the polygloss is dry, we're going to move on to our, our next step.
So 10 minutes has passed and my two stainless steel items are dried. I took a closer look at them and I can actually touch them and I can feel that it feels very nice. When I place my fingers on them, there are no prints that are coming up, but I have to cure these items. So when you're finished applying your polygloss and you give it that 10 minutes to dry on its own, that so you can take a look and see if there are bubbles or any other problems or issues, you want to then cure your items in your oven or you can use your mug press now if you are using your oven or a convection oven you want to set it at 320 Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes if you're going to be using a mug press in this case which I will be doing you want to um, press it for about 320 Fahrenheit for three minutes three minutes which is basically 180 seconds but with parchment paper and a light pressure so you can get parchment paper from your supermarket you can get it from Amazon you can get it from different places I got mine from the supermarket and it works really well so what I'm gonna do right now is to take off some of this parchment paper wrap it around this um, flask here and I'm gonna place it within the mug press and I'm gonna apply light pressure for 180 seconds which is three minutes once I do this my flask will be cured fully cured with my polygloss onto it and then we're gonna come back and then go into the process of actually sublimating onto this stainless steel flask so we can see how the final product comes out so stay with me and stick with me and if you haven't seen before the video where I actually apply polygloss to a plate, a ceramic plate, and a ceramic mug. I'll put the link on the screen, at the top of the screen there, where you can actually take a look at that video when this one is finished. So I'm here in the Silhouette Studio program right now. I have my images prepared. I have my sizes correct. And I'm going to go over to file and print. Now before we get deeper into the printing settings, what I want you to note is that I will be using A sub paper. Okay, A sub paper. And everything will be linked down in the description for you so you can actually go down there and see everything that I'll be using. But I'll be using A sub paper However, with um, die press and polygloss, they recommend not to use ASL paper. And they said not to use ASL paper because it can cause roll, roller marks, it can cause ink bleed, and it can also cause sticky paper residue. So they recommend using a different brand of sublimation paper or use multipurpose paper like hammer mill multipurpose paper. So that is exactly what the instructions said or what the press recommend when it comes to polygloss however i used um a sub paper before with my ceramic items and i got great results okay i got great results and further in this video you will see that i'll be using a sub paper and also i'll be doing a test with just normal copy paper and the same hammer mill multipurpose purpose paper and we're going to see the result coming out so stick with me right to the end so we are here inside of the print settings i'm going to be using my Epson wf77 workforce printer and my printing settings i'll be choosing high quality paper and not premium presentation paper mat normally i will go for pre premium presentation paper mat this time i'm going to be using high quality plain paper and my print quality will be set to quality which is the highest now my image is already mirrored so i don't need to do this and my next step will be to just press print and let's go over to the printer to see the result
So our two images are printed out and I use a sub paper, as you can see here, I use a sub paper. My next step right now, I am going to be putting these two designs onto the bottles. We're going to press them and then we're going to look at the final results. So I have my scissors, I have some heat resistant tape, I have some, some gloves, you should get gloves because stainless steel can be very hot, especially when coming out of a press. So I'm just going to apply these two images onto the stainless steel items. We're going to press them and then we're going to see the result. Now I'm going to be using and I'm going to turn on my mug press and let it warm up while I am doing this. I'm going to be using 360 Fahrenheit and I'm just going to be using about 60 seconds. Nothing too long, but just 60 seconds. And we're going to see if this actually comes out how I expect it to come out. So we have the mom design here. We flip that design and now I am going to apply it lengthway onto this bottle. I'm going to get my heat tape and I'm going to tape it down. And I'm going to do the same thing for the flask. All right, so we have both of the designs taped onto the, the bottle and the flask. Now what I'm going to do is to get some parchment paper and I'm going to wrap around these two items. I'm going to wrap around the two items with this parchment paper and I'm going to heat press it. So I'm putting on my gloves now because my time is counting down. And now we are to one. So I'm going to gently remove the bottle and have a little bit of steam. All right, so I just removed the parchment paper and what I'm going to do is to allow this to dry and cool off a little because this is pretty hot. So what I'm going to do is just allow it to cool off. So while this is cooling off, I can do this one. All right, so we are back here and I have the two stainless steel items here we're going to pull off these papers and we're going to see the final result but please make sure to stick with me to the end of the video this part of the video is going to be the most important part when i say it's going to be the most important part i mean it because i've done some other testing in the background on another bottle so i want to show you the results of that also so stay with me right to the end of this video and if you're getting value if you're learning something from this tutorial video make sure just to hit that um, thumb button or smash that like button just down below let's get into actually taking off um, these papers and what I did was to allow it to cool off first so I let I allow all two of these here to cool off you know sometimes we peel off the paper when it's hot I decided this time around to peel off the paper when it's cool so we can see if it makes a difference in terms of sticky residue etc all right all right and I want you guys to be able to see everything so I'm going to bring you in as close as possible as I take this off and so far I'm seeing some sticky residue and this is a sub paper right just remember that this is a sub paper now I want you to take a look at this. This is sticky residue that came off of the air sub paper. Now some may think that this is a problem, but this is really not a problem. I have a, a wet rag here. What I'm going to do with this wet rag is just wipe off this flask. Or you can run it over the sink when you're finished. 
and you will be able to get all of that white residue off your flask or your stainless steel item. So I'm just wiping off that white residue. And guess what? Take a look at this. And I'm seeing a little glare, but I hope you guys can see it clearly. Let me bring it back here. I'm probably going to change the camera angle at the end of the video so you can actually see because you can see some white glare that's from the light. But tell me what you think. Look at how bright, how clean, how crispy this came out. Of course, yes, we had the white residue on it, but as you can see, that's really not a problem. You just wipe off the surface and you got this result. And it can put back on the cover on that. And uh, there you go. We have that result. All right, so we have that done. Let's look at this one because this one was a little different. We have the ASL paper on this one also, but let us see what actually, how this one actually turned out. All right, and clearly this has a lot of white residue also on it. So take a look. We have some white residue once again on this bottle. All right. What I'm going to do is take the same, the same wet cloth and I'm going to wipe it off. I probably should wash this out since most of the water has gone off of it, but I'll see what I can get out of it. Wow. Wow. Take a look at this guys. Take a look at that. Look at these bright, vibrant colors. I want to come close up. I want you to make, I want to make sure that you can see. Look at these bright, vibrant colors. And once again, as I mentioned before, what I'm going to do is to give a close up on all two of these so you can see what is really going on. All right. So I want you to tell me what you think about these two. Um, this bottle and this flask with the polyglo polygloss process. Um, you see me done it from start to finish. I've used a sub paper, but now that we have dealt with the a sub paper, let's really talk about what the instructions said and uh, what you should use and maybe what you shouldn't use. Is there a right and wrong answer when it comes to using plain paper, copy paper or plain submission paper. Well, that is what I'm going to get into right now. And this part is really important. So make sure to stay until the end. And as promised, I want to talk about the different papers that you can use and the quality result that you would get. Now, as I mentioned before earlier in the video, I'm going to try to give you a cleaner look. And as you can see here, I just decided to use my logo here along with my information. Make sure to follow me on this platform, guys. But as you can see, the quality looks pretty good and I'm going to bring it in as close as possible as it would allow me to because I want you to be able to see that quality. And remember, this is a sub paper that I use. A sub paper. Wow. This is a sub paper that I use. Now, what I want to show you guys that is very important is when you are applying your polygloss, um, you will see some instructions when you purchase your polygloss, sorry, you, you will get your instructions saying not to use a sub paper. However, I did a test, a second test because I found this extra bottle that I had and I did a second test. Now I want to take a look at these colors. Now on the camera, you may not be able to see it as clear as possible, but these colors here are awesome and nice but they are also fady. Now this is hammer mill copy paper and this one is regular copy paper. This one is about 97% and I think this is this one is around 96% or so in brightness. And this is the quality. Now I want you to take a closer look at this logo itself. Now you may not be able to really see it here but you can see some fading lines, some dots all around the image itself. Take a closer look. Right, with the mom, you can see it looks pretty fady. 
I'm not sure if you can see it clearly within um, this camera, but it's pretty fady. Now let me let me make let me put two of these together, kind of to see. Take a look at that, and take a look at this. Now some may say it's because one is actually silver stainless steel and one is kind of gray. Okay, so let's look at this image. This one here on the left, you can see the colors. And then let's look at this one. Can you see a difference? I surely can see a difference. And it is just not the lighting. This one on my left hand side here is much darker. This one here is much lighter. This one on the left hand side here is ASA paper. This one here that I use is copy paper. So I guess guys, you have to really test it for yourself to find out what is going on. And I also tried ASA paper here. This is ASA paper I tried on the same bottle and this is a better result I got also. So you can see on the silver ASA paper, right? ASA paper here. This over here, these two over here are copy paper. So I just wanted to bring the comparison to show you guys that there is actually a difference. Now, if you don't mind um, that light fady look, well, you can go for it. But in my estimation and my advice, I will go with the ASA paper. Once again, as I mentioned before, in the instructions, when you get your polygloss, it will tell you to not use ASA paper. One of the reasons why the instructions will tell you not to use a sub paper is because it calls it causes roller marks, ink bleed, st and sticky paper residue. Now we had the sticky paper res residue, but guess what? I was able to wipe it off. Now it is clean, and I can actually use it to my advantage. Okay, so I hope you guys understand everything that I said here today. I hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial video. And yes, you can apply polygloss and print and sublimate onto stainless steel items. I hope you guys really did enjoy this tutorial video. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe because there are so many persons out there who need this extra help. So thanks for watching. And remember, we make your prints and fashions come alive. See you in the next one.